Medial elbow tendinopathy, also known as golfer's elbow, involves tendinosis at the common origin of the flexor pronator muscle groups, typically caused by repetitive flexion and pronation of the wrist. It is frequently observed in athletes involved in throwing sports, racket sports, and golf. Those affected by this condition often experience inner elbow pain that worsens during activities such as throwing, serving, or hitting a forehand. Additionally, symptoms may include a weak grip and paresthesias in the ring and little finger, which could indicate an ulna neuropathy. Let's revise some anatomy. The distal humerus has a medial and lateral epicondyle. The epicondyles are bony prominences easily palpated on the medial and lateral sides of the distal humerus just proximal to the elbow joint. The lateral humeral epicondyle serves as the bony common origin of the wrist and extrinsic hand extensors. So this is where the extensors of the hands originate, whereas the medial humeral epicondyle serves as the bony common origin of the wrist and extrinsic hand flexors. So these are where the hand flexors originate, the medial epicondyle. So medial elbow tendinopathy is essentially irritation or tendinosis of the medial epicondyle where the tendons insert. It is diagnosed clinically by the following findings. Localized tenderness over the medial epicondyle and proximal wrist flexor muscle mass. Pain with resisted wrist flexion and pronation with the elbow in full extension. Pain with passive wrist extension with the elbow in full extension. So what's the difference between medial and lateral elbow tendinopathy? Well, as the name suggests, medial elbow tendinopathy or golfer's elbow affects the inner elbow and is associated with the flexor pronator muscle group, leading to pain exacerbated by movements such as wrist flexion and pronation. Conversely, lateral or outer elbow tendinopathy, known as tennis elbow, impacts the outer elbow and involves the extensor muscles, particularly the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Pain in lateral elbow tendinopathy typically worsens with wrist extension and supination movements. Investigations for medial elbow tendinopathy. Well, imaging tests such as x-rays, ultrasounds, and MRIs are not routinely performed, but can be useful. Typically, x-rays do not show abnormalities, whereas ultrasound might reveal decreased echogenicity, inhomogeneity, and thickening of the tendons, sometimes accompanied by a local fluid collection. MRIs can show increased signal intensity near the medial epicondyle. Treatment of medial elbow tendinopathy generally begins with non-operative methods, of course, including rest, application of ice, if it's acute, 10 to 20 minutes every few hours during acute stages, compression later on, and the use of topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as Voltaren gel, or oral anti-inflammatory drugs. If these conservative approaches fail, a treatment plan might include an injection of corticosteroid, it's crucial to limit the amount of injections given for tendinopathy, as there could be associated tendon damage and even complications to the ulnar nerve, which runs quite close to this area. If symptoms persist despite adequate conservative treatment, surgical intervention may be considered. In surgical treatment, might involve releasing the flexor or pronator origin, removing granulation tissue, decorticating the medial epicondylar bone, and reconstructing the medial musculotendinous unit. So in summary, we looked at medial elbow tendinopathy, also known as golfer's elbow, which 
involves tendinosis at the common origin of the flexor pronator muscle group. It's typically seen in people who do repetitive flexion and pronation of the wrist, such as in golf or any throwing sports. Treatment includes conservative, corticosteroid injection, and very rarely surgery. Thank you for watching.